Good morning. You're my favorite people now. Good morning. If you could come join us, and we'd like to get today's ceremony started. My name's Tim Wheaton. I'm the Harold Alfon Director of Athletics here at Colby College, and it is my great pleasure to have you all here on this momentous day. Um, while we've had a, a, a few games here, very successful games for our Colby uh, baseball and softball teams, this is our official dedication of this fantastic facility. Um, it is state-of-the-art, first in the NESC NESCAC synthetic fields. It's allowed our teams uh, and local teams to get started um, in Chile, but uh, on, on a dry field. Uh, so it's a fantastic opportunity for our program and the local community. So I'm happy you can be here to start this process. Um, I want to uh, thank, and we will thank more specifically later, uh, the alumni, parents, members of our local community that have made this day possible and this facility possible. Um, it is my great pleasure um, to welcome our, our star of the day, the host of our event, uh, Provost and Dean of Faculty, uh, Lori Kletzer, to share some thoughts with you today. Thank you for being with us. Um, this, is, this is probably the best of a spring Maine day. I know those of you who don't live in Maine must wonder how I could call this a spring day. But those of you who do live in Maine know that yes, this is a spring day in Maine. So I, I, wanna, I, I wanna thank you all for joining us at what I hope you will agree are our, pardon the cliche, are our fields of dreams. You know, it, I can't be the only one to think about that famous movie phrase, right? When in field of dreams, build it and they will come. Um, this has been a dream of ours. It was a very quickly realized dream. And I, at least every time I drive by these fields, I feel this incredible sense of joy and I almost kind of have to pinch myself that that this is what we have here on Mayflower Hill. Um, it, is, um, it is truly remarkable. I am so pleased that you have come here to join us on a beautiful, chilly, sunny Saturday morning. And as um, Athletic Director Wheaton said, we are uh, so proud of the fact that we have the first in NESCAC uh, artificial turf baseball and softball. We welcome our competitors on this lovely field. I have watched visiting teams come and say, whoa, dude, this is so cool. How come we can't have this? And there's something very important in that. For our players, this has signified, and I'm gonna come back to the theme of players, this really signifies and re-signifies our re-engagement, continued commitment to athletics, to competitive athletics, not only at not only at Colby, but actually for the um, for the Central Maine and particularly the Waterville community. Um, this is we believe very much for Colby that these fields, and as some of you know, and many of you will know as we think about the future, are our recommitment to having first-class competitive facilities, not just in baseball and softball, but across the board really signifies the role of athletics in our educational mission. Uh, and, and we, for us, this absolutely also signifies our commitment to community. So not only do our competitive athletes get to play on this incredible facility, but within probably hours of our own athletes coming onto this field for the first time, the Thomas College baseball team was here as well. So this is not just a field for Colby. This is a field for Central Maine, and it is a field in particular for our little leaguers and for our, our local colleges. And we couldn't be more delighted to be able to make this kind of investment with our parents and friends as co-investors. We couldn't be more delighted to do this. And for us, this field also, in that kind of renewed commitment sense, this field tells prospective students, 
what athletics means at Colby and what athletics means in our educational mission. And so we are going to benefit from this for years and years and years to come. A very large number of parents, alums, and friends came together to make these fields possible. And I'd like to take a few minutes to recognize the individuals whose names are reflected on the plaque that is at the entryway to this complex. The baseball home dugout was made possible uh, by Jamie and Jennifer Faris as lead partners there, parents of baseball players, class of 16 and class of 18, Jonathan and Suzanne Ellenthal, parents class of 16, Jesse and Judith Courier, parents of the class of 16, Nancy Saplar, also parents of the class of 16, Keith and Laurel Starks, class of 16 parents, and Colleen and David Mason, parents of the class of 18. Could I ask all of us for a round of applause for these parents? I have more names that I'd like to share acknowledgement of. The visitors dugout on the baseball side is named in memory of coach John Winken. And that was made possible by Jamie and Jennifer Freese, uh, class of 16 and 18, Don Rice, class of 56, and Sherry Rice, Eddie Wooden, class of 69, Jay Donegan, class of 81, parent uh, from the classes of 12 and 14, and Lisa Soupforth, Donegan, class of 84, parent 12, parent 14. I wanna pause for, for just a minute. There's this remarkable thing about Colby and the Colby community. You will notice in some of these acknowledgements, um, Colby grads and their children who are also Colby grads. The deep roots of this Colby community are something I have never seen at any other place. Some of my colleagues like to joke that there must be something about the water, right? That people come to Colby and they meet their spouses and partners and then they have kids and their kids come to Colby. I really have no idea what it is. Although, I suspect it's just another aspect of the Colby magic. Let me go back. Bob Sage, class of 49, and Phyllis Sage. Ed Marchetti, class of 60, parent 86 and 88, and Patricia Marchetti. Bob Burke, class of 81, and parent 83, and Donna Burke, in memory of Ed Burke, junior, class of 60, and parent from 86. And Bain Pollard, class of 76, parent 05 and 99, and Rita Pollard and many, many other alumni, parents, and friends. Well, it's delightful to have you all here on this dedication day. And of course, seeing sports in person um, can be topped by nothing else. We are in Maine, and it's cold, and often we have sports in the winter. And webcasting, especially for parents, really shrinks the distance between home and Mayflower Hill. And the webcasting, which is available today, the webcasting is made possible and I say this with great gratitude to Susan Wood Spofford, class of 82, parent 17, and Rob Spofford, parent class of 17. We have a flagpole. The Carey flagpole is given in honor of Charlie Carey, <coughs> excuse me, class of 63, and Pam Plum Carey, class of 65, in honor of the military service of Coach John Winken and Charlie Carey. On Coombs Field, John Kreideweiss, class of 64, donated Wright Field in honor of the 1964 Roadrunners. I won't recount the story, but trust me, as you know, in baseball there is always a story. Mike Shostak, class of 72, and Ann O'Hanian, Shostak, class of 72, donated the Shostak left field foul pole, that being left field. On the softball field, Gary Knight, class of 66, and Lynn Longfield Knight, class of 65, donated the Knight home bullpen over there. And additional gifts of the project were given by a number of other parents. And I, if, you will, um, if you will, I'd like to acknowledge them as well. Gordon Saul, parent class of 18, and Wendy Smith, parent class of 18. Bob Hessline, parent 13, 15, and Chris Ciotti, parent 13 and 15. Paul Spillane, class of 79, parent class of eight. Hope Reed Spillane, also class of 78, and Nicholas Reed Spillane, class of eight. Katherine Whelan, parent, class of nine, and Robert Whelan, same parent, same class. Lauren Becker, class of 13, Andrew Becker, parent, class of 13, and Deborah Messalum, parent, class of 13. Ted Brumfield, class of 68. Stephanie and Jonathan Carlson, parents from 15 in honor of their cell. Um, Nils, 
George Katz, class of 83, uh, parent class of 16, and Lisa Katz, parent class of 16, and a group of softball alums in honor of Coach Dick Bailey. Coach Bailey, are, can you hear me? Is, are you? Okay. So I'd like to pause for a moment. Co Coach Bailey has made an enormous difference in the history of Colby softball. And I'd like to pause for a moment and ask for a round of applause for Coach Dick Bailey. He coached, he coached for 13 seasons. He and I did not overlap here. And he is, if you can use the word prolific, which I'm not actually sure you can or should or supposed to in reference to softball, but it's softball, right, and baseball. So you make up the rules as you go along. Oh, that was probably offensive. My apologies. Um, uh, he inspired his players on and off the field. And they, um, their contribution in his honor, and we are so pleased, Coach Bailey, to have you here with us today. In your program, it, and it's a beautiful program, you will see some special notes at a, about a few Colby coaches and players. The baseball field has retained the name um, of Coombs Field in honor of baseball legend Colby Jack Coombs, class of 06, and that is, of course, 1906, not 2006. Coach John Winken, who passed away in the summer of 2014, was an inspiration to many of his players, not only at Colby, but also at the University of Maine and at Husson College. And his son, David Winken, joins us here today, and he will throw out one of the ceremonial first pitches. At the conclusion um, of my remarks, I will invite you to find your way either to the softball field or to the baseball field, and there we will have um, ceremonial first pitches. I'd like to acknowledge and recognize those people who have the courage to throw out the first pitches. Um, these, um, by design, these people represent Colby's past, Colby's present, and the very rich and exciting future on this facility. For softball, uh, I'd like to acknowledge Patty Valvana Smith, class of 80. Uh, she was part of the very first varsity softball team at Colby. I come from the same cohort. I was not a college athlete, but it made such a difference in our lives to be a part of the cohort that was, um, well, finally, you know, it long overdue, welcomed into competitive athletics. So, Patty, it is really wonderful to have you here with us. Patty has been recognized many times at Colby and will continue to be for her really distinguished athletic career here and her academic career. There is an award in Patty's honor, the Valvanis Award, is given to athletes who demonstrate the qualities of academic and athletic excellence. So welcome, Patty. <laughs> Julia Saul is Colby Softball's current starting pitcher. She is a member of the class of 18 from Palo Alto, California, where I'm virtually certain it is warmer, even though it is three hours behind us. Julia is an environmental science major, and a, she has a minor in computer science. In 2015, Julia compiled a 7 and 10 record. She led the mules in victory. She had a 3.58 ERA. She completed 10 games and 107.2 innings pitched. Julia, no pressure today. But Julia, thank you for being here. And I want to welcome Rayleigh Gilbert. Rayleigh is 10 years old. She lives in Waterville. She lives with her mother, Amy, her father, Chris, and her brother, Trafton. And she will represent Colby's future with a ceremonial first pitch. She plays on the Central Maine team, The Attack. Rayleigh? And all the ceremonial balls on the softball side will be caught by catcher Skylar Leib, class of 18. Ba well, baseball's past, we're going to hold some of that for the games itself. Baseball's past, as I said, will be represented by David Winken, son of John Winken. You may recognize David, those of you who live in town, from Joseph's Sporting Goods Store on Kennedy Memorial Drive, which he co-owns. David, thank you for being here, for representing the Winken legacy at Colby.
Colby baseball captain and starting pitcher, Soren Hansen, class of 16, will represent Colby's present. Soren is a mathematics major, has a minor in Chinese, and has been a coot leader. He has had many accomplishments in four years, or almost four years at Colby, but in 2015, he was named to the all NESCAC first team, the all ECAC New England second team, and he made the Division III Baseball.com all New England region team. Welcome, Soren. No pressure, and good luck today. OK, we're getting there. Sorry, it's not very elegant when the pages are blown around by the wind. Finally, the future of baseball in Central Maine is being represented this morning by Brendan Roderick, who's also 10 years old. Brendan lives in Waterville with his mother, Christina, his father, Bernie, and his sister, Juliana. Brendan plays in Waterville's Cal Ripken League for the Joseph Sporting Goods team. A round of applause. Uh, we would, on behalf of all of us, I want to thank Matt Skian, Director of Waterville's Parks and Recreation Department, for bringing Rayleigh and Brendan to our attention. And we look forward, and this is the last community piece that I want to return to, we really look forward to welcoming our community teams. I mentioned to you Thomas College. The community aspect of this facility means as much to us as the Colby aspect of this facility. We couldn't be happier that the really team of parents and friends and the college could come together to build this facility not just for Colby but for the local community and we we will relish all the joy that comes from the community being on this facility as well as our own teams. I also want to thank Waterville Mayor Nick Iskro for being here today. He's been a great partner with Colby. He will continue to be a great partner and we're very grateful for that partnership and for his presence today. Please thank me for, for acknowledging and thanking everyone who has joined us here today. So one last round of applause. And actually, I lied. There's going to be one more round of applause. I would be remiss if I didn't recognize and acknowledge and thank the efforts of the Harold Alphon Director of Athletics, Tim Wheaton, veteran baseball coach here at Colby Dale Plummer, uh, the newest member of the team, our new softball coach, Lisa Ann Wallace, and their staff who have worked tirelessly with our athletes and tirelessly to just make sure this new facility was ready to go. So one last round of applause, please. Just prior to noon, we will once again ask for your attention for the national anthem, which will be sung by one of our a cappella groups, Mayflower Chill, which couldn't be more appropriately named this morning. Um, so this concludes the final part of the dedication. I do want to ask those who are involved in the ceremonial first pitches to come up here and we'll do a photograph together. But so we'll call you all back together, stay warm. Thank you for being with us. And as they say, soon, play ball. <laughs>